Do I really need to explain just who exactly Godzilla is? I mean, he's had a film career spanning almost 65 years, tons of merchandise, Blue Oyster Cult wrote a song about him, Heck, I'm willing to bet some of you even watching this also really like that cartoon that Hanna-Barbera put out in the 1970s. Of course, there would also be Godzilla comics. In Japan, most of the Godzilla movies also had manga adaptations. There would also be a few non-film canon comic stories. And in 2014, Godzilla's 60th anniversary was celebrated with a 21-story filled one-shot volume released by Shoguku Khan Incorporated. There would also be American Godzilla comics, beginning in 1976 with a four-page mini-comic promoting Godzilla vs. Megalon. Then in 1979, Marvel Comics began a 24-issue series where the King of the Monsters would square off against the spy agency, S.H.I.E.L.D. Those issues can be kind of hard to track down, especially since, you know, Marvel doesn't have the license anymore. Marvel did put out an essential volume of Godzilla comics, but it was only available for a couple of months, somewhere around 2006 to 2007. In 1987, Dark Horse Comics began publishing several different Godzilla comics, most notably a one-shot that was a cross-promotion with a commercial campaign where the kaiju legend took on NBA All-Star Charles Barkley. In 2010, IDW Publishing acquired the Godzilla license, along with the license to publish several other Toho Films monsters like Rodan, Mothra, and King Ghidorah. Now, if you're familiar with any of Lincara's videos, then you know about that first series that came out, Godzilla Kingdom of Monsters. However, after that series concluded, IDW followed it up with a series of miniseries. And today we're looking at one of those miniseries. This is Godzilla in Hell. Godzilla falls into a large chasm. When he makes impact with the ground, a large crater is formed. Godzilla gets up and begins to look around, even using his radioactive breath to destroy the title credits. And soon Godzilla encounters a small town with a nuclear power plant. Feeling hungry, Godzilla nears the plant to prepare to take a bite. However, there is a large tentacle monster living in one of the cooling towers. It strikes, but Godzilla slams it to the ground and stomps on it. Godzilla then marches on and encounters a large cloud consisting of the souls of the damned. The cloud swarms Godzilla, briefly tripping him up. Inside the cloud, he finds another Godzilla waiting. Now, visually, this other Godzilla sort of resembles the form Godzilla took in the movie Godzilla vs. Destroya, in which... The King of the Monsters was actually undergoing a nuclear meltdown. Godzilla attacks his cloud-dwelling counterpart, only for it to sprout tentacles and additional mouths. The tentacles ensnare Godzilla and begin tossing him around. Eventually, Godzilla uses his radioactive breath to break free. Now, this monster is actually Orga, a creature that first appeared in the film Godzilla 2000. Orga was a UFO that came to Earth and had the ability to absorb the DNA from various living creatures and take on their appearances and derive any of their abilities. Godzilla attacks Orga, even going as far as to enter Orga's mouth. Orga begins absorbing Godzilla's DNA until Godzilla uses his radioactive breath, resulting in Orga's explosion. The crowd then opens up and Godzilla falls into another chasm. Once Godzilla arrives in his new surroundings, he's greeted by another rival, Rodan. Rodan is the name of a species of flying dinosaur whose eggs hatched not too long after being freed by underground Soviet nuclear bomb tests. Rodan has fought Godzilla on a couple of occasions, but more often than not, the two have actually been teammates. Immediately, Godzilla tries to blast Rodan with his radioactive breath. Rodan dodges the attack and swoops in on Godzilla. However, Godzilla knocks the flyer down with a tail whip. It's then that another portal opens up and Godzilla goes through to another world. Godzilla enters a frozen wasteland, where Anguirus emerges from suspended animation. Anguirus is the name of a spike-shelled dinosaur, who was the first kaiju Godzilla ever fought in the film Godzilla Raids Again, which was known as Gigantus the Fire Monster here in the U.S. Anguirus chomps down on Godzilla's arm, but the King of the Monsters simply tosses him aside. Anguirus crashes through the ice, leading to a large ocean, where Varan is leading. Varan is the forgotten Toho kaiju. His film, Varan the Unbelievable, was not very popular in either Japan or the U.S. And the only reason anyone would really remember him is because of his prominent appearance in the Godzilla Monster of Monsters Nintendo game. Godzilla quickly incinerates Varan with one radioactive blast. It's then that another portal opens where King Ghidorah emerges and begins dragging Godzilla down. The three-headed dragon, King Ghidorah, is Godzilla's most prominent foe, having squared off against the King of the Monsters at least seven times. Each of Ghidorah's heads can fire a lightning-like fire blast, 
and he can generate hurricane force winds with his wings. Godzilla finds himself with what appears to be the burning remains of Rio de Janeiro. However, King Ghidorah isn't waiting there. Instead, Godzilla sees Space Godzilla. Space Godzilla was created when some of Godzilla's cells were somehow ejected into outer space and wound up absorbing the radiation of a black hole. The only way Godzilla could defeat his cosmic doppelganger was to destroy the large crystals prominently displayed on Space Godzilla's back. Space Godzilla blasts Godzilla, knocking him back a few feet. Godzilla counters with a blast of his own. Initially triumphant, Space Godzilla comes back to consciousness, and the two continue to fight each other. It's then that everything explodes. Godzilla is unharmed. He wakes up in a field surrounded by angelic moth-like creatures. The creatures implore Godzilla to give peace a chance. He refuses, and they open up a new portal to show Godzilla the error of his ways. Godzilla crashes back into the frozen wasteland where Space Godzilla is waiting once more. It's then that several winged demons appear, welcoming Godzilla to hell. The demons work in tandem with Space Godzilla, and they overwhelm Godzilla. It's then that the angel moth creatures return to assist Godzilla. They charge the King of the Monsters up to the point that he can easily shatter Space Godzilla's crystals. Godzilla then tries to take out the angels, even eating a few. Godzilla then enters another portal. Upon entering the portal, Godzilla is jumped by King Ghidorah, who has brought along a friend, Destroya. Destroya is the result of microscopic crustaceans that were awakened and absorbed the radioactivity from Godzilla being in Tokyo Bay. They also absorbed the energy from the oxygen destroyer that was used to destroy Godzilla in his first film, Godzilla King of the Monsters. Over time, those creatures began to absorb more oxygen and they eventually merged together and merged together and merged together, forming a giant oxygen destroying monster. Godzilla is tossed around by the two creatures. Godzilla even begins trying to use the surrounding buildings to hide and evade his attackers. They prove little help, and eventually Ghidra picks up Godzilla and drops him down on top of Tokyo Tower, where the creature is impaled. However, Godzilla is not dead. He snaps off the top of the tower and lowers himself to the ground. It's then that Destroyer jumps him. Destroyer then splits into three separate beings and decapitates Godzilla. Except this isn't really Godzilla. I think. Look, I've had to read this thing on multiple occasions, and I really have no idea what's going on here. I mean, there's two Godzillas, one of them got decapitated, I, uh, I don't know which one's which. This new Godzilla gets jumped by Ghidorah and Destroya once again. He falls to the ground, and Ghidorah begins fighting Destroya for some reason. Godzilla then rises and blasts the other two monsters. They fire back, and this causes another portal open. As Godzilla nears the portal, the other monsters disappear. Godzilla begins wandering through this new world, first encountering a snowstorm and nearly freezing to death, and then encountering a volcanic landscape. The flowing lava leads over a cliff, which crumbles under Godzilla's weight. When he lands, Godzilla is attacked by tiny demon bats as he approaches a gigantic mountain, on top of which sits another giant tentacle monster. Godzilla tries to use his radioactive breath, but it just sputters out. The demon bats then overwhelm Godzilla, leaving behind only a skeleton. However, soon afterwards, the bats begin to roar like Godzilla. They then encircle the skeleton and begin to form a new body for the King of Monsters. Each one of the demon bats then unleashes its own atomic blast, incinerating the creature on top of the mountain. Having conquered the realm of hell, Godzilla ascends to the top of the mountain and is allowed to return to Earth in the land of the living once again. And so ends Godzilla in Hell. How was it? Well, on the plus side, there's some really nice painted artwork throughout most of this. I mean, it's each in different styles, but for the most part, it's all really darn good. Um, it's a good quick read. There's almost no dialogue in it, which makes it really easy for a review show. Um, Godzilla is cool and badass. Um, there's lots of monster fights. I do kind of like that there's, of course, a Dante's Inferno slash Paradise Lost analogy throughout most of this series. That being said, I do have a few qualms with this series, too. Namely, first and foremost, that whole Godzilla destroy a King Ghidorah fight goes off the damn rails. Again, you heard me earlier, I have no idea what's going on during that thing. What I kind of wish that was maybe conveyed better. I mean, and that kind of adds to my second real problem with this book. There is a real lack of dialogue in this. Outside of a few monster roars and a couple of times where there's some narratorial captions, that's about it. I mean, 
Uh, I kind of wish that maybe some humans had also gotten trapped in hell and Godzilla was sort of unknowingly helping them to escape as well. If I may make a brief analogy here. Every so often some schmo tries to make a version of Lucky Charm cereal that's only the marshmallows, no cereal bits. And it's always terrible. The marshmallows held, no consistency in milk, and they lose their effectiveness over time, and you just wind up eating a large chunk of sugar-flavored soup. The fact is, the cereal Brits provide body to Lucky Charms. In a way, that's kind of like what humans do in Godzilla movies. Look, I get it. You don't watch a Godzilla movie for humans. I wish those Brian Cranston fans would just realize that. But humans can play a part in a Godzilla movie, can play a prominent part in a Godzilla movie. Again, much like the serial bits in Lucky Charms. Just Monsters really isn't that interesting. And so, I'm going to have to unfortunately give Godzilla in Hell a C. And with that, let's see what we'll be doing next time on the Random Trade Review.